Hey, what's up guys? So before I start today's video, I just want to say thanks to Boy Wanda who recommended this video and also shout out to Ray. If you guys have not checked out his interview with Complex, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's really dope. One thing that I really like that he actually shared with us in the interview is that he said almost nobody was down to shoot with him in the beginning except one of his friends. And sometimes for us creatives, that's all it takes is to have that one person who lets us shoot with them because this allows us to keep practicing, experimenting and growing as an artist. Artist, and that's something that he definitely did do is grow as an artist which eventually led to him shooting with Travis So yeah, I definitely recommend you guys check the video out So I'll have the link in the description box down below before we start here's Ray's photo and here's my photo So you guys get an idea about the edit we're gonna be learning how to do today Also one more tip to help get you this consistent look a little bit better is try shooting at a location that does have a similar vibe like his Which is either dead grass vibe or that desert scenery it doesn't necessarily have to be the yellow colors as you'll see as long as you do have some greens we can manipulate those greens and turn them into yellows all right so let's get started in lightroom what i've noticed about ray's photos is that he does have a warm overall tone to his photos so we're gonna go ahead and move this pointer to the right just to achieve this warm tone as well next we're gonna add more magentas and then we're gonna go manipulate the greens so we're gonna go ahead and move the pointer to the right and to the left and as we're moving it to the left we do get those nice desert warm tones in the greens so we're gonna go ahead and leave it right there now we are gonna manipulate the yellows and move it to the left because it does add more of that dead grass vibe so one thing i really noticed that ray likes to do with his blue tone skies is turn those blues into a purple color so we're gonna go ahead and turn our blue sky into a magenta tone as well we're going to move on to the saturation bar and now we're really going to define those yellow tones in the colors by saturating the yellows and the orange colors more. Since we did end up manipulating the greens and turned them into yellows, when we move the saturation bar for the greens to the right, it's going to go ahead and emphasize those yellow tones that we switched it to. And the same concept goes with the blue, so when we start moving the pointer to the right, those purples will get enhanced. We're going to give that sky a little bit more of a kick by saturating those purple tones a little bit more. Lastly, I'm going to saturate the red tones just to bring up those colors more. Moving on to the luminance tool, we're going to expose those colors properly by moving the pointer to the left or to the right depending on how it affects the colors. Moving on to the blues, the sky was a little bit dark to begin with, so by moving the pointer to the right, we're going to go ahead and add some more brightness to it. And now the same concept with the purple since it also affects the sky. I'm going to go ahead and just move the magenta pointer to the left and to the right just to see what it's going to be affecting, but there's not much that I'm seeing that's changing, so I'm just going to move on. Okay, so now on the split toning highlight section, if you hold option and you click on the hue pointer, it's going to give you an overall color to your photo. And by setting it to the left or to the right, it shows you the exact color temperature that you'll be getting. And this is a nice warm color, so I'm going to stay right here and now just saturate it from here. Also, I'm pretty positive that Ray does shoot with the film camera because he does have a nice grain texture to his overall photos. But since I only have a DSLR to achieve this grain texture, we could just move this pointer to the right. And that's how we start to add grain to our overall photo. I am going to be adding some luminance to the photo just to smoothen up that grain that we just added. Before messing with the contrast, I am going to add a little bit more vibrance just so we can make those yellow tones that we added pop a little bit more. So this contrast part may be a little bit different for you guys than it is for me depending whether you guys shot on a cloudy day or in the shade because this really affects how harsh shadows can be so keep that in mind. I am going to be bringing up those highlights and bringing down those shadows just to give it a little bit more contrast before I move on to Photoshop. And that is all for Lightroom and now we're going to move on to Photoshop but before we move on to Photoshop here is the before and after Lightroom edit. The first thing we want to do in Photoshop is create a selective color adjustment and then go to our whites which are our highlights and we're going to adjust the colors on it and add a little bit more magenta to the highlights. And I'm also going to brighten up the sky because it was a little bit too dark to begin with. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and go to the neutrals, which is our midtones, and we're gonna add yellow to this because Ray does give his photos an overall warm look, and this is gonna help us achieve this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the contrast, and I'm actually gonna end up uncontrasting the neutrals just a bit. Now when I get to the blacks, the only thing I'm gonna be adjusting is the magenta slider, and I am gonna be adding a little bit more of that purple tone to the overall photo. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and start adjusting the red colors. The only thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more red tone to the skin color, and then then I'm gonna move on to the yellow colors. Now that we're in the yellow colors, we are gonna start moving around the pointer and then actually add some red tones into the yellows. And then we are gonna slide the yellow pointer all the way to the right, which enhances those yellow desert vibes. And our yellow tones are a little bit too contrasted, so we are gonna slide the black pointer to the left to uncontrast those tones. Now, if there are any more green tones left, I am gonna make sure to add yellows to that, and I'm also gonna uncontrast those colors. Now we're going to be adding a gold gradient adjustment layer and we are going to do this to warm up the overall photo. I'm going to go ahead and pick the transparent option. Now when I double click on the black pointer, I am going to end up picking a gold color as DCC503, which is a color I did end up liking and ended up working for me when I made this adjustment the first time. Now for the other end, we are going to double click it and another color I did like is DAAD00. The next thing we're going to do is change that blending mode to color burn and then we're going to bring down the opacity to 8% and by bringing down the opacity what that means is that you're bringing down the strength of that adjustment. The next adjustment we're going to make is the hue and saturation and we're going to go ahead and select the blues and we're going to go ahead and adjust the saturation and we are going to end up toning these colors down and the next thing I want to do is adjust the lightness and we're also going to end up bringing down the lightness for this color. The next color adjustment I am going to make is for the magentas and I am going to end up saturating these colors because it does affect the colors of the outfit. Now we're going to be adding more green to the overall photo because it does need that film look and what you want to do is hold command option shift and then click E which is going to create a whole new layer of all the adjustments you just made into your new background photo. Now we can go to filter and click noise and then add noise. Now make sure that Gaussian is selected and the monochromatic checkbox is also checked off. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the amount to 7% and once that's done I'm going to go ahead and press OK to let this adjustment take place. Now as I'm zooming into the photo you guys can see that it definitely added a lot more grain which helps give it that film look. Now before we finish I am going to uncontrast this photo just a bit more because I noticed that it was too contrasted and to do this I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and then I'm going to make two points. I'm going to put the first pointer close to the edge and now for the last pointer to the edge I'm just going to bring this up to give it that uncontrasted look. I'm going to be making one more curves adjustment layer to bring up the midtones and I'm going to do this by making two pointers again. The first one's going to be in the center and then I'm going to go towards the middle and just drag that up because this will be affecting only the midtones. Now I'm going to change the opacity of the first curves adjustment we made and I'm going to bring it down to about 55%. The last thing I'm going to go ahead and do is make a selective color adjustment and I am going to go to the neutral so I can uncontrast these midtones a little bit more. Now we're all done and here's the before and after. That's it for today's video guys, I hope you guys did find it helpful and I'll also have a Lightroom preset available for free down below in the description box. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and also feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching once again and I hope to catch you guys on the next one. Alright, peace.